Chinese Communist Party controls the coronavirus narrative. They even control the science around the world. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. From the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak, the Chinese Communist Party has been involved in a massive cover-up. The party silenced doctors who tried to warn others about the virus. They lied about human-to-human -human transmission of the virus. They pressured the World Health Organization to repeat those lies. That's why I've been calling the coronavirus the CCP virus. Because no matter where the virus came from, the Chinese Communist Party is still responsible for the cover-up that led to a global pandemic. But now that the Wuhan lab leak theory is suddenly credible, more media have been doing actual reporting, which means they're almost catching up to the group of amateur Twitter sleuths that broke the story last year. So evidence that the CCP virus leaked from a lab in Wuhan is piling up, and people are paying attention. The Chinese Communist Party hates this. Their response to this has been to repeatedly imply the coronavirus actually comes from the U.S. military biolab at Fort Detrick, with headlines like, Who Lives a Lie Gets Challenged by the Truth. Proving once again the Communist Party lives in an irony-free zone. I've talked about how the U.S. media outright dismissed the lab leak hypothesis as a conspiracy theory which made them a mouthpiece for Chinese Communist propaganda. That's on my other channel, America Uncovered. But this denial and censorship isn't just the media's fault. For the last year, we've been told to follow the science when it comes to the virus. But it's clear now the Chinese regime has been able to manipulate, co-opt, and censor the science from the very beginning. Some of it was obvious like when Chinese police silenced Dr. Li Wenliang for trying to warn other doctors about the CCP virus. Another early example. A group of Chinese researchers shared the genome of the CCP virus on January 11, 2020. This was hailed as a sign China was being more open about the virus outbreak. It turns out not so much. The lab that released the genome was shut down for rectification the next day. The researchers had already sequenced the genome on January 5th, two days before China's official announcement that the mysterious pneumonia cases in Wuhan were caused by a coronavirus. The team made the finding public on January 11th after it saw that the authorities had taken no obvious action to warn the public about the coronavirus. And then they were closed down. But months later, the head of that lab, Zhang Yongzhen, denied his lab suffered any prolonged closure. Was he telling the truth? It's hard to say. Chinese scientists work under an authoritarian regime. If he's talking to Time magazine, Zhang isn't going to say, oh yeah, the government totally closed me down, even if it did. But it turns out Zhang's lab was not the first one to sequence the virus genome. Several other labs had sequenced it in late December and early January. Then they were ordered by health officials to stop testing and destroy the samples. On January 3rd, China's National Health Commission, the nation's top health authority, ordered institutions not to publish any information related to the unknown disease, and ordered labs to transfer any samples they had to designated testing institutions or to destroy them. Even the Wuhan Institute of Virology was ordered to destroy their samples. So given the global gag order, Zhang's lab would definitely have been in trouble for publishing the genome without official approval. The Chinese Communist Party has definitely censored scientists in China. That's terrible, but not surprising. But the Chinese regime has also censored scientists in the West. They've done this through manipulating Western scientific journals to silence any discussion about the lab leak hypothesis. 
I'll tell you how after the break. Welcome back. We're talking about the CCP virus, so you probably didn't see an ad there, did you? One of the main ways the Communist Party spreads its message is to co-opt outsiders and get them to repeat the party line. In the case of the CCP virus, one of the loudest voices has been Dr. Peter Daszak. Daszak worked directly with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But he organized a letter published in The Lancet, that's a prestigious medical journal. His letter called the lab leak hypothesis a conspiracy theory. Of course, at first people didn't realize that Daszak's nonprofit was working with the Wuhan Institute of Virology on bat coronaviruses, because Daszak didn't disclose that giant conflict of interest. In fact, he outright lied and said, we declare no competing interests. And then he talked to anyone who would interview him about how the idea that the CCP virus could have possibly leaked from a lab was an absurd and harmful conspiracy theory. Daszak also traveled to China as part of the WHO team to investigate the origins of the coronavirus. He was the only American allowed on the team. Sure, he's worked with the lab that should be investigated, but that just means he's an expert, right? Speaking of conspiracy theories, Daszak even gave an interview to my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times. He validated their propaganda that the CCP virus did not come from China. Last year, after the Trump administration shut down funding to Daszak's nonprofit, Nature magazine even did a sympathetic interview with Daszak. Of course, when Daszak was describing the research they did in Wuhan that the U.S. government should definitely be funding, he conveniently left out the part about how the Wuhan Institute of Virology was doing gain-of-function research to make coronaviruses more dangerous to humans. We know they were doing this based on research grants Daszak got from the U.S. National Institutes of Health. But now that Daszak's conflict of interest had been exposed, he's left a UN-backed commission to look into the origins of COVID. That commission was organized by The Lancet, the same medical journal that published Daszak's letter condemning the lab leak hypothesis, the one where he falsely declared no competing interests. <laughs> I bet The Lancet is embarrassed now. They probably should uh, issue a correction on that letter. Instead, the Lancet published Daszak's updated disclosure statement, where he said he never received funding from the People's Republic of China. Okay, that's technically true. You never directly got money from China, but you did research with a lab that's directly funded and managed by the Chinese government, one that also works with the Chinese military. And your access to that work depends on the Chinese Communist Party. Maybe that's worth pointing out. But the Lancet letter wasn't the only one that convinced everyone to stop looking at the lab leak hypothesis. There was also this letter published in Nature Medicine. It was held up as definitive scientific proof the CCP virus came from nature and not a lab leak. One of the scientists who wrote that letter received China's top science award for foreigners and another is a guest professor at China's CDC, and a visiting professor at China's Fudan University. So those are both big conflicts of interest. But there's an even bigger problem with the Nature Medicine Journal. The problem of where the journal gets its money. More after the break. Welcome back. In 2015, Nature Medicine published this research article on bat coronaviruses. One of the authors was Dr. Shi Zheng Li, who works on bat coronaviruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And it involved doing gain-of-function research on bat coronaviruses, which led to Nature Medicine leaving this editor's note on the article to debunk the idea of a CCP virus lab leak. Maybe it's time to update that editor's note. Shi Zheng Li also published a paper in Nature there was the first analysis of the CCP virus. In that paper, she introduced a virus called RATG13, which was the closest relative to the CCP virus. She said 
it was found in nature. So if the closest relative to the CCP virus was found in nature, then surely the CCP virus itself must also have a natural origin, right? But Dr. Schur hid the fact that she was the one who discovered RATG13 and took it into her lab and did experiments on it. And it's possible she used gain-of-function research to turn RATG13 into the CCP virus. But it took nature nine months to even acknowledge that she was the one who discovered RATG13. Sher Jing Li has been hiding a lot more stuff when it comes to the CCP virus. I don't have time to get into it all here, but let me know if you'd like me to do an episode on it. And Sher isn't the only Chinese scientist who used Western journals to dismiss the possibility of a lab leak. Chinese officials claimed the CCP virus outbreak was from an animal at the Wuhan wet market. And then Chinese scientists suddenly started submitting papers in Western journals pointing to a similar virus that was in pangolins. Nature published two of these Chinese papers, and that made the theory seem credible. Even though it turns out, pangolins weren't sold at that wet market. But Nature never pointed out the problems with the pangolin studies. And here's where it gets real interesting. Nature has a financial relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Here's how it works. Nature's parent company is Springer Nature. It turns out that China is becoming the biggest national sponsor of open access journals published by both Springer Nature and Elsevier, owner of The Lancet. Oh, The Lancet too. The one Daszak wrote for. Good to know. So what does all this Chinese communist money go to? They're paying these publishing companies to publish Chinese scientific journals that the Communist Party funded. Those journals include China Science Materials, which is edited by the state-run China Academy of Sciences, and the Chinese Journal of Catalysis, which is also run by several Chinese state scientific bodies. Springer Nature and Elsevier get millions of dollars, and China scientific journals seem more prestigious. Springer Nature's sponsorship agreement alone could be worth $10 million. That's 10 million reasons to not publish papers that challenge the Communist Party's coronavirus claims. And Springer Nature has censored articles in the past. Back in 2017, at the Chinese Communist Party's request, Springer Nature censored hundreds of journal articles on sensitive topics. Topics that Springer Nature censored include Taiwan, Tibet, and human rights. Those articles were censored in China, but it's not a leap to think Springer Nature would be worried about angering the Chinese regime outside China now about the origins of the CCP virus, since millions of dollars may depend on it. So when we in America were told to follow the science over the past year, we were actually following scientists and journals that have huge conflicts of interest including funding from Communist China. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, fans who support our efforts to expose the truth about the Communist Party by contributing through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Black Label asks, given the massive sinkholes, the shaking buildings, and the collapse of bridges, and the recent fear of the Taishan nuclear plant going up Chernobyl style, would China fall first from an infrastructure standpoint before any military action would happen? That's a really interesting question, Black Label. So first of all, considering all the corruption in construction and manufacturing you just mentioned, you gotta wonder how capable the Chinese Communist Party's military actually is. But I think you're right. Internal corruption is a major risk to the Chinese Communist Party. That's something even former communist leaders have talked about. A lot of construction is also rushed through to artificially boost GDP numbers. It's not tied to any kind of market principles. On top of that, China is running out of US dollars. That will have a major impact on the economy and any future infrastructure works. So I think you're right. War with the Chinese Communist Party may never happen. Internal corruption 
could be the catalyst that triggers the collapse of the party. Thanks for your question and your support, Black Label. And a big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your questions on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.